Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making cornbread. Now this is a really old recipe and there are a million variations on it but what you need is a cup of milk and i'm using buttermilk in my recipe but you can use just about anything from canned evaporated milk to skim milk in it kind of depending on what texture and flavor you're looking for and your dietary needs um, i'm using one egg in mine you can use egg whites, like I said, depending on your dietary needs. And I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of honey to mine. Now, if you are used to eating um, cornbread in restaurants and you really like that, you're going to want more honey or you're going to want maybe up to a quarter of a cup of sugar in it. Because in restaurants and the mixes that you just add water to and stuff like that, they have usually high fructose corn syrup in them, which is really, really sweet. And you're not going to like it if you don't sweeten it up. But you don't have to put any kind of sweetener in yours. It just depends on what your tastes are. I like that little bit of honey. Honey um, really adds to the flavor of it, I think. And it helps it brown. It gives it a really nice golden brown color. And I'm using a quarter of a cup of butter in mine for my fat. Now you need a quarter of a cup of fat, but you can use uh, butter, which I'm using. You can use vegetable shortening, something like Crisco. You could use lard. You could use a healthy oil, something like grapeseed oil or olive oil if you wanted to. Like I said, depending on what you're looking for exactly and dietary restrictions. Now I'm making this the long way. I have a cup of all-purpose flour and a cup of yellow cornmeal, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. You can also use two cups of self-rising cornmeal mix in this. The self-rising cornmeal mixes, this is what they have in them. They have the flour, the cornmeal, the baking powder, and the salt already in them, and you don't have to measure any of that. You just need two cups of cornmeal mix. And it's around here, it's hard to find plain cornmeal. Um, but I've had a lot of people leave comments on older videos and say they can't find the self-rising stuff where they live. So I broke it down in this recipe so you would know how to make it either way. So we're gonna start, and this is one of the tricks. I wanna give you some tricks to making your cornbread come out correctly. We're going to start by heating up our fat in our pan and I'm going to use an iron skillet. This is an 8 inch skillet. You could use an 8 inch or a 10 inch. Um, on the bottom I think this is a number 8 and this is a number 5. But if you use the 10 inch of course your cornbread is not going to be as thick. It's going to cook about the same because it's going to be bigger around. If you use the um, the smaller one, the 8 inch one, you're going to have much thicker cornbread. Might take a little bit longer to cook, but not much longer. You're going to cook it 20-25 minutes either way, depending on your oven. And you want to go ahead and turn your oven on 400 degrees. But one of the tricks is to heat up your fat, whatever kind you use. Especially butter though, because the brown butter adds a lot to the flavor of the cornbread. And apparently brown butter is now a thing. I had no idea. I've been browning butter in my recipes for years and didn't know it was a thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our skillet and our butter in our oven. It's still preheating. It's not preheated yet, but that's fine. And we're going to preheat our skillet and get our butter nice and hot and sizzling before we add it in to our cornbread batter. So I'm going to stick this in the oven now. Okay, now while our um, pan starts preheating, and our oven finishes, I'm going to go ahead and add the flour and the cornmeal. And you can also adjust if you get the cornmeal and, um, and the flour instead of the self-rising stuff. You can adjust it and you can add more cornmeal or you can do less cornmeal, more flour. 
the more flour you have, the lighter and fluffier the cornbread is going to be. But the cor more cornmeal you use, of course, the more it's going to be more dense, but it's also going to have more of that corn taste. Um, so you can play with that. Go all the way to a half a cup of either and adjust it to suit your taste. You know, like you could have a half a cup of cornmeal and a cup and a half of flour or three quarters of a cup, or you could go the other way with it and just do like half a cup of flour. And you can make cornbread that is just all cornmeal, but it is much denser and it doesn't rise quite as much. So once you kind of whisk that together, then you want to add all your wet ingredients at one time except, of course, for your hot butter. And like I said, I'm using buttermilk. You can use any milk in it. You could even use powdered milk if you were making this in the winter time and you were um, out of milk and you were using some of the stuff that you had in your pantry. It would work just fine. And we're just going to whisk this in here. You definitely don't need to drag out a mixer or anything like that to make cornbread. Really, just a spoon is fine, but since I didn't beat my egg up before I threw it in there, I thought I'd use a whisk and beat it up a little bit. If you use regular milk, like skim milk or something, it's not quite as thick as the buttermilk. You might um, need a little less, like maybe three quarters of a cup of milk instead of a whole cup. But because buttermilk is thicker, you have to use a little bit more. Cornbread's a really easy recipe. It mixes up much faster than your oven will preheat to 400 degrees. I actually turned the oven on before I turned my cameras on, and it's still not even close to preheated. So it's going to take our butter just a little while to get hot. And when you're making this at home, you probably want to get the oven pretty close to preheated and put that butter in there before you even start to mix up your batter because like I said it mixes up really fast especially if you're using the self-rising cornmeal mix you're not even going to have that many ingredients to throw in I mean it's that takes it down to four three four ingredients is all you need to make cornbread now there's lots of stuff that you can add into cornbread. It's a very basic bread, kind of like biscuits. There's lots of stuff you can add in those. You can um, crumble some bacon up in this. You can chop up some onions and add in it. Um, onions added in it is one of my mama's favorites. She would chop up an onion and throw it in her cornbread and then eat an onion with her cornbread. <laughs> she really liked onions. but. Um, you can add peppers into it, cheese into it. Um, uh, lots of times when we get snowed in in the winter and the kids were little, when they were home all day, they would eat all day and I would make some cornbread muffins and put uh, corn and cheese and some onions in it and all oh, that is just so good in the muffins and they would just eat them for a snack. But you can, like I said, you can put a lot of different things in it and flavor it different if you want to. It's just kind of what sort of meal you're preparing and what sort of flavor you want. Basic cornbread is kind of a favorite around here. We just make it just like this. And like I said, just a tiny bit of honey, but the honey is up to you or sugar. You can use either one. And I've eating at some folks houses and eating in restaurants occasionally where they literally make it so sweet it's like a cake and that's not really cornbread i don't know what that is but the little bit of honey really does it uh just kind of accentuates the flavor and um it enhances it it doesn't overpower it and it doesn't turn it into a cake Okay, our butter's sizzling pretty good. You can see there it's nice and white and foamy. That's what you want. You do want to watch it. You don't want to burn it. I mean, brown butter and burn butter, butter is kind of two different things. But heating your butter in your skillet does two things. It heats the butter and it changes the flavor of it or whatever kind of fat you're using. But, it, well, it does three things. I'm sorry. It heats your butter. And the heated butter is actually going to start cooking the cornbread before we put it in the oven kind of like the hot water does in johnny cakes and stuff and it changes the flavor
but it also greases your skillet good so you don't have to worry about your cornbread sticking. So kind of turn it in the skillet so that it coats the sides good, especially if you're using a pan like this and you're going to have a really thick pan of cornbread, you want to make sure you get it all the way up on the sides. And you just add this in and kind of stir a little bit as you pour it in there so it don't cook a big lump in the top of your cornbread batter. And once you've got it stirred in there good, just dump it back in your skillet. Now you do want to kind of make sure it's not humped up real big in the middle when you pour it in there. And you can, maybe you can see, I'm not sure, there's still a little bit of butter in my pan and it's kind of all around my cornbread. That's what you want with whatever kind of fat you're using. You want it a little bit around the edges. That way as it rises up, you don't have to worry about it sticking. And now we're just going to stick this back in our 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Now this pan, I'm pretty sure it'll take a whole 25 minutes because it's going to be really thick. While we're waiting on our cornbread to finish up, I thought I'd share my mail with you this week. I got quite a few Easter cards. The first one is from Dorinda, and of course they all have verses on them. This one says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Uh, and that is Matthew 20, 28. And in it, she asks about cooking in those little countertop ovens. She said everything she tries to cook in them, she burns. Uh, they do cook different than a big oven for sure because the elements are so close to what you're cooking. And most of them, the top and the bottom element will come on every time you try to bake something and it'll burn what you're trying to bake. I've cooked in one as an oven a few times because... I had to either the big one would just heat up the kitchen too much or that was all I had. If you cover it with um, a lid and there are a lot of pans you can get that have a metal lid on them, you would want something with a metal lid or even use a cookie sheet, a little cookie sheet over the top of what you're baking. Or you can cover it with aluminum foil, just tint it with aluminum foil like we tint the pies in the oven. That will help. I had one little bitty countertop oven and I baked biscuits in them. I used to bake biscuits in them quite a bit. And I would put the biscuits in there and bake them and then actually flip them over on the pan about halfway through baking so that they didn't burn. Otherwise, the top of them would just totally burn. So maybe y'all could try some of those tricks if you're baking in a little countertop oven. Um, this is from Karen and she got, let me put that all together. She got these crosses in her church on Sunday, and it looks like they are made out of palm leaves. I'm pretty sure that's palm leaves. And she said she thought of me and sent it to me, and she also got this little um, track. And I need to get some more Bible tracks ordered. I used to have tons of them, and I don't have anything now to give folks if I'm talking to them. But this has the example of the bridge on it, which is also in the Billy Graham tracks that I used a lot. And it has John 3.16 on the front of it. So, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's kind of the verse that um, whenever you're talking to somebody about salvation, you need to know at least that verse. This one is from Carolyn. Uh, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old is gone. And that is 2 Corinthians 5.17. And that is one of the most wonderful things about salvation. Because if you are saved, the old person is gone. That person who maybe did bad things or had bad things happen to them. That's all gone, and you are a new creation in Christ. And that would be another good one. Um, maybe if you were ministering to people who had been hurt, especially, or if you were um, part of a jail ministry, you might definitely want to learn 2 Corinthians 5.17. This one is from Julie, 
and she sent me a little bookmark. I've said how much I love um, bookmarks before, and I use them all in my cookbooks. All of my cookbooks have them, the bookmarks in them. The bookmark says, Rejoice, I am alive forever and ever. And that's Revelations 118. And on the front of the card, it has Romans 5, 8. Christ died for us. I got another letter from Melinda in Texas. She's been sending me like a letter a week. And then I got a package from Teresa in Alaska. And she sent me a little card. And she sent me this beautiful dish towel from Alaska. It says Alaska on it. It has a moose in the mountains. And she sent me a book from her church in Alaska. So thank you all very much. I do love going to check the mail. And I got another package. And I told you all, every time I say anything, I've got to really watch what I say about something I want or something I need or something. I had, was doing the mail a couple weeks ago and I got a card that had some forsythia on it and I said we've lived here 22 years and every year I had planned on planting some. I have a lot of flower and bushes and stuff in my yard but I have no forsythia. And Vanessa picked up on that and I got a package from um, the Arbor Day Foundation that has forsythia in it and it has some crepe myrtle and a red maple. You can see it, it has a few little blooms on it and I hadn't even planted them yet and it's raining today. So as soon as I finish this, Vanessa, I'm going to go out in the rain and plant my forsythia. So I'll have it next spring and these are pretty good size so they ought to really be pretty by next spring. Thank you. Now, after about 20-25 minutes in the oven, this is what your cornbread should look like. Uh, I get a lot of questions about making cornbread, and it is so simple. I think a lot of people, they do videos or they publish recipes and stuff, and they try to make it look complicated. The only other thing that you really need to know that I didn't already include in this is that you want to let this sit for about five minutes before you cut it or before you try to take it out of the pan. Because if you try right now when it's this hot, it's going to crumble and break apart. But in about five minutes, I might have to take a butter knife and go around the edge of this before I dump it out on a plate, if I dump it out on a plate. Normally, I just cut it right in the pan and leave it in the pan. If you are using a newer iron skillet, for some reason, really new iron skillets, um, the iron in them will kind of bleed into your cornbread and it will totally change the color of your cornbread. So if you're, uh, if you have an iron skillet that's, I'm going to say less than a year old, you might for sure want to turn it out on the pan. But when they get to be, you know, 5, 10, 15 years old, you don't have to worry about that. It's not going to bleed like that. And I'm not really sure what causes that in new pans, but when we had the store yesteryear when Samantha and David were running that and I was making cornbread there. No matter how busy I was, I had to get that cornbread out of those new skillets. If I didn't, it they really tasted like the skillet. Now, you can bake cornbread in any kind of pan. You can bake it in glass or metal or whatever. You don't have to do it in a skillet. But if you're using that new skillet, you don't want to leave it in there. Um, like I said, I don't know what causes it. Maybe they're just not seasoned as well. Uh, or maybe it's that pre-seasoned stuff they put on. It's not all off of it yet. <laughs> but it really does change the taste of it, and it's not good. Now, a well-seasoned cast iron skillet is going to change the taste of your cornbread a little bit too. But it's going to be good. You're not going to have to worry about that strange iron flavor in a well-seasoned skillet. But if it's new, just make sure you take it out after about five minutes. Now, you can also see, I'm sure, even in the video, the little brown peaks that we have on this pan of cornbread and how it's brown around the edges. The honey is what gives it that color. If you don't put any kind of sweetener in it, it's not going to do that until it's way too well done and dried out. 
Um, you don't want to cook it so long that you dry it out. And you don't want to make sure you get it done enough because if you don't cook it until it's done, it's going to be really dense and soggy. Uh, you can tell it's done. You can do a toothpick test if you want to. But once it starts to crack like this on top, that's a pretty good indicator that it's done and you don't need to worry about it. You're not going to have soggy cornbread. Just like I said, the only thing is let it sit five minutes, make sure you get it done and don't cook it until it dries out. And if you heat that fat, it's going to totally change the flavor. One of the only dishes that my father-in-law ever complimented me on was my cornbread. And he said it was the best cornbread he ever ate. And he was about as hillbilly as hillbilly gets, pretty much like my family. So when you get that kind of compliment from a hillbilly man who is older, you make pretty good cornbread. And if you follow the tips in this video, you're going to make pretty good cornbread. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.